the near fulfillment of this event as first predicted centuries earlier by Daniel himself was, of course, in 168 BC with the desecration of the temple by Antiochus. So we're talking about near far prophecy, near to Daniel, far from Daniel. That's what we mean by near far, near in the terms of when Daniel wrote down these words, the first event to happen in history would be Antiochus epiphanies and the events in 168 bc from daniel's perspective nearer to daniel however if they are indeed um serving a dual function i.e near and far then part of the prophecy was also far away from daniel in other words 2000 years plus far away from daniel as it's been you know 2000 years since the first century when uh when the, the near part took place Van Campen continues, the parallel far fulfillment of this event, we're talking about this desolation, abomination of desolation and things like that. The far fulfillment of the event will come at the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week when what? When Antichrist desecrates the rebuilt temple in the last days. So we're talking about Daniel's 70th week. Remember, we talked about that during the previous topic study, topical number five or topic number four, I believe. And now we're still in the 70th week of Daniel. We're looking at these events that have been that are unfolding in this la during these last seven years. And I know many Christians are listening to these uh, studies with a view towards, well, we're going to be raptured away during this time. We don't really even have to focus on what, or who, or what Antichrist is, what he's going to be doing, et cetera, et cetera, because the church will have already been yanked away by the rapture. Well, that's the pre pre. Uh, uh, pre-trib view of rapture. Some people have abandoned the idea of rapture altogether. Um, I myself do not believe that the rapture should be abandoned. I do believe there is a rapture, a snatching away of the saints unto uh, Yeshua. However, I place the rapture not prior to any seven-year events, and not even at the midpoint, but close to the midpoint. I pay, place it, according to my understanding of, of Scripture, slightly after the midpoint, and the view is known as pre-trib, I'm sorry, pre-wrath rapture, which we will deal with in time, if you remember my little topical schedule. Let's keep moving along into this um, um, uh, part. We'll read, I think, one more paragraph, maybe two more paragraphs. And then I, I, I'm going to draw this a little shorter tonight because of my technical difficulties. I apologize. Um, I'll keep this short in case this really isn't turning out the way I want it to, and I need to go back and redo it, so my apologies. All right, so let's continue with um, Van Campen. He says, thus by, uh, and we're talking about Antichrist, and, and uh, as seen through the lens of the uh, forerunner uh, Antiochus, thus by looking at the ancient despot Antiochus, we gain considerable insight into Antichrist and his strategy for the last days, as well as the many other events that will occur during the 70th week. That's basically the overview, the, the kind of like summary of where we're going with the, the details. Let's continue. Um, uh, Van Campen continues, the following then is a brief overview of these events that will give us greater insight into the end times. And so now he's gonna be dealing with um, history as seen through the lens of what happened during the times of Antiochus Epiphanes and his dealings with Israel. Remember, from context, the 70th week belongs to Daniel, his people, his city, and his temple. Remember that when we from uh, reading Daniel 9, 24 through 27, that God, I'm paraphrasing, God told Daniel through the through the angel Gabriel, 70 weeks are determined for your people, your temple, your city to do all of these things. And there's like these six bullet points. Maybe I'll in post-production, I'll flash them on the screen. But in those details, primarily they're given over to the people of Israel, the land of Israel, the temple of Israel, et cetera, et cetera. It will involve, in my opinion, uh, dealings with the church because of the feature of the inclusion of the Gentile believers into the people of God at the spiritual covenant level, at the new covenant level. Genuine Christian, Gentile Christians are grafted into Israel at the spiritual new covenant level. This doesn't turn them into Jews, but it turns them into genuine covenant members at the heart level because of their personal relationship with the Messiah of Israel, namely Jesus. And so as we're reading through these historical events, 
please remember that primarily from the historical uh, near-term fulfillment or the partial fulfillment, most of that is going to be dealing with Israel, the temple, the people of Israel, the land of Israel, et cetera, et cetera. But when we look at what Antichrist is going to do in the future, as we begin to turn to the book of Revelation later, we're going to find that Antichrist starts with Israel, just like the prophecies does say. He deals with the people of Israel, the land of Israel, the temple, etc. That's just kind of his focus. His, his headquarters is going to be set up in Jerusalem. But the activities of the Antichrist of the future are going to spill out into the rest of the world. So it's going to involve not just Israel and Jerusalem and the people of Israel and the temple of Israel, but it's going to now involve the Gentile nations surrounding Israel, and eventually it'll spread out into the entire world, as I understand the prophecy. So first, uh, Van Campen is going to give us the historical that dealt primarily with Israel, and then with a view towards what's going to happen when Antichrist takes over and picks up where his forerunner uh, Antiochus uh, left off. So we'll read through this first part um or the first paragraph and then i'm like i said i'm gonna cut this off a little bit early because of the technical difficulties that i'm, that I'm having with my recording so um van cameron says first a little history in ancient israel long after the end of her own monarchies and after most of the exiles had returned to the promised land god's chosen nation the natural line of abraham they persisted in ever increasing increasing apostasy. So we already know that this is already past history. We can again know that when you're reading through the Bible and you're seeking to understand end time prophecy, you have to realize that part of what you're reading has details that have already taken place historically. And so it's allowable to use history to back up what the Bible says, realizing, of course, at the end of the day, that the Bible is the final say and it's the ultimate authority when it talks about historical events, but the Bible doesn't flesh out all of the details like history does. So the historians who came alongside of the Bible and wrote various details, like we read about um, Josephus is a biblical historical writer. Well, he's not biblical, but he's an historical writer of the time who lived through a lot of those events. And the historians that wrote about Antiochus that we're going to be reading about, um, when we read all these details, we can have the Bible in one hand and our history book in the other, but the ultimate authority is not the history book. The ultimate authority is the Bible, the one that's going to be the most accurate, even though it's not going to be the one that has most of the details. Van Campen continues, because of Israel's blatant disbelief and disobedience, the Lord not only allowed his nation to be conquered and persecuted, by an exceedingly cruel pagan oppressor um, named Antiochus Epiphanes, right, the Greek king of Syria. But he even permitted his own holy temple in Jerusalem to be profaned. So, again, and we'll draw our study to a close with this. <clears throat> the purpose of studying this part of history is not so that we can be better historians, but it's because Bible prophecy pl plays out in such a way that it has near far applications or partial total application. And as we're reading through the prophecies about this coming world ruler, then we gain our best insight from studying the prophecies that have already spoken to the forerunner to that event known as Antiochus Epiphanes, or other Antichrist figures who have already come and gone on the scene. Um, the Bible can be speaking of those figures as well, but I believe that when we're talking about Antichrist, there is a spirit of Antichrist that is in the world, and a program kind of, or forerunners of Antichrist, types and shadows, as it were, of Antichrist, prototype Antichrist that have come and gone. But, and I'll close with this, when we read through the Bible, there is definitely a final single, uh, what we might call um, prominent figure, uh, uh, an Antichrist figure who is going to uh, finalize the prophecies so that we're talking about not now just a, um, we're not talking anymore about the spirit of Antichrist. We begin focusing on an individual, a single, a final man, a, a, um, a focal point, a, a fullness of the prophecy coming to pass in the person of this Antichrist figure that's going to be uh, controlling things from the Middle East, but influence, uh, influencing uh, events that will have impact, ripple effects around the world. And so we'll cut it off tonight here a little bit early. As I mentioned, I apologize. 
Uh, but that'll do it for eschatology, a biblical study of end time events.